My name is Jean-Pierre Puty, plasma physicist, former director of research at French National Center for Scientific Research. Months have passed. The decisions were taken. The budget for heater has increased from 5 to 15 billion euros. Work has already started in Kadaroch. Now we are in a crisis situation. The French Nuclear Authority has agreed the project. Finally, the public is asking questions. What happens? What it gives? In fact, there is virtually no debate. There has been no real debate of ideas. There is no scientific debate. There are articles and journals. There are videos that are much propaganda images. There are some books that have been published. The question we must ask is whether we can explain what is heater and how it works. Is it possible to write heater for dummies? Indeed, a fusion machine is much more complicated than a nuclear fission reactor. For decades all this research on nuclear fusion is surrounded in mystery and it is protected by its complexity. I think what I try to do with this video is to break this complexity and explain it to the public. I have built models for this. We will do tests to see if you can understand. Indeed, after the H-bomb, it was still not easy to make measurements and to exploit the energy of a hydrogen bomb, so scientists I just wondered if they could not do the same in the laboratory. So to start, let's make a small detour to astrophysics, from a model that represents the magnetic field lines around the Earth. This magnetic field has the property to confine the plasma. This plasma is emitted by the Sun. It continuously sends charged particles. These particles are nuclei of atoms, positively charged, and negatively charged electrons. And all these charged particles continuously hits Earth guided by the magnetic field and what is called the solar wind. The sun is a star, and stars emit the stellar wind. These particles entering the magnetic field also protects the Earth. A shock wave occurs near the Earth. One could almost say that the Earth is placed in a kind of supersonic blower, whose source is the Sun. First concept to remember, the trapped particles wrap around the magnetic field lines. There you see the Earth's field lines. The particles will follow spiral paths. Here, magnetic field lines are closer together near the poles that they're outside. There is a second effect that is called the magnetic mirror effect. The particles, as they approach the pole, they have spiral paths and then they leave in reverse. So the second key idea for plasmas, which are clouds of charged particles, is that they will flee areas of high magnetic field. With regard to Earth, these particles are reflected in the vicinity of the magnetic poles, and then they are returned by the other pole. They like that return similar to ping-pong, and this is what was discovered by Mr. Van Allen, and was called the Van Allen belts. Here we have a picture that shows the Van Allen belts around the Earth. This is a three-dimensional structure, of course. So here we have a kind of natural heater, some natural trapping of charged particles. This is what gave the idea to theorists and experimentalists to see if they could do the same on Earth. There is a magnetic field here that is stronger at the ends and the plasma tends to go back and forth. Here I have a solenoid. This is a cylinder with windings creating a magnetic field. 
the plasma tends to concentrate near the axis. This is a first attempt at confinement. Then what the scientists at Princeton in USA and in many other countries wanted was to confine particles in a so-called magnetic bottle. Here, I made a model with two bottles of mineral water. You see here that, that the field is more intense at both ends. With this, the CNET is hoped to confine a thermonuclear plasma inside these mirrors machines. Unfortunately, it did not work very well, because there was instabilities in plasma leakage on the axis. The solution proposed by Andrei Sakharov is as follows. We'll take the model and close it on itself. So if you close a bottle on itself, you get this, you get a torus. Hence the magnetic field lines here are circles. Et une chose que vous constatez en regardant cette maquette, c'est que les, les, les... One thing you find looking at this model is that the windings are closer in the center than outside. Et sur les machines... In machines such as Tokamix, such as Heater, it is even more important because the Taurus has a much more narrow throat. There are even machines that have almost no throat at all. Donc cet effet de resserrement... The tightening of the windings inside is very important. I told you earlier when I showed the model of the Earth that the magnetic field lines are much more separated at the location where the field is lower and more tight than where the field is strongest. In the inner side of the torus, the magnetic field lines are closer together while outside they are farther apart. Insofar precisely plasmas tend to flee areas of intense field. The plasma will not stay in the center of the torus as we would like. It will tend to escape to the periphery. So at this point, there is a researcher at Princeton named Lyman Spitzer, who first came up with a new idea precisely, because the magnetic field tends to deport particles of these regions. He takes two toroids and he associates them in a surface such as this one, and now this leakage effect is cancelled. We will be able to see in three dimensions and this is called a stellarator built in Princeton in 1955. This is the model I have built. In this region, the particles tend to leave the torus and in this part, on the contrary, they are deflected in the direction opposite to the other half torus. So, we could use an image, for example a man organizing races of bicycles. He decides to use a cycle path. A circular track. This circular track unfortunately is covered with oil, whereby cyclists move outwardly and leave the track. So he designs the track figure 8, so that in this round part they go right, and in this round part they go left, and the whole cyclists are approximately in the middle. However, it did not work very well, and scientists at West were very puzzled, wondering what they would do. At that time, an idea came from Russia. Andrei Sakharov and then Lev Artsimovich found a solution to get a homogeneous plasma. It is to include the kind of spoon to turn the plasma. At the beginning, I said that particles tend to wrap around the magnetic field lines. Here, the idea of Sakharov and Artsimovich is to produce a spiral magnetic field. A homogeneous plasma is then obtained. To do this, you see that it is necessary to have two components of the magnetic field. One component can be found here and we will call it the toroidal field. That is the one that is created by these toroidal field coils. And then there is a second component with this strange name toroidal. The physicist will tell you that to make a field in this sense, you need a current inside the plasma torus. To get this current flowing inside the plasma, we will use an induction system. Alors, système d'induction, euh, je dirais que...
I would say that all students remember this demonstration. You take a loop, and then you take a magnet, and when the magnet is approached, there is an induced current. This occurs because there is a variation of the B field. When I approach the magnet, there is an induced current, and if I stop, there is no longer a current. The current exists only if there is a change in the current. So, Russian scientists said, we will use a solenoid and we will increase the magnetic field. To explain the details, I will go immediately the heater design, because heater is simpler than the jet tokamak, the largest existing tokamak. I made a model of jet. I could explain how it works. There is a kind of architecture that no longer exists on heater. Go directly to this machine heater. You see the toroidal chamber which is located here. You have here these toroidal windings I marked and read the direction of current flow. And here these windings are nothing other than the coils. Here are circular coils, which correspond to a tokamak with circular section, which is in fact the Tor Super Tokamak, which is also located in Kedart in France. Here the coils are different. I did not have the opportunity to represent the true section of the tokamak, but I have figured these parts that are the superconducting coils creating the magnetic field. In the center, we will put a solenoid like this which is also superconducting, and which is traversed by an increasing current. And here, the intensity will go up to 13 Tesla, that is a very high value. You know when you have a solenoid, the magnetic field is like this, and loop it around, and comes back and it has a significant value outside in this region. By placing the solenoid in the center of the system, the field is like the ribs of an umbrella or as a stream of water, and it will come down here. The volume of the plasma chamber will be immersed in a variable field. All this will create an induced current. The physicist says there are equations allowing to calculate the electric field given the B field and the time for the increase. You have a field that goes up to 13 Tesla. The time of this rise is extremely long. It will last 1000 seconds or 500 seconds hundreds of seconds. It seems enormous, hundreds of seconds, it's been 10 minutes. A magnetic field which increases over a time of 10 minutes. We say, with that, I'll make a very weak electric field electromotive placing the moving electrons. This field, it is a few tenths of volts per meter which is very low. So how is it that with such a weak field we manage to circulate 15 million nips inside heater? The answer is inside this room is the hydrogen at a pressure and an extremely low density. When filling the token mix, they are filled with hydrogen with deuterium or a deuterium tritium mixture. Filling pressure, this is 100,000 to atmospheric pressure, which is much lower than the pressure in the neon tube. You know that the neon tube's electric current passes because the gas is rarefied. If you make a hole in the tube and the pressure rises, the current no longer flows. Why the current no longer flows? Because there are too many obstacles. The electric current is a stream of electrons flowing under given potential difference. They must have room. If there are too many obstacles, the current does not flow. Here, the pressure is low, so that the density particles is extremely low. It's thus possible to create a current and the joule effect will arise. The joule is what? With this electric field we accelerate the electrons, and then these electrons will collide with the ions, and so by interacting with the atoms and ions, this will heat the ions.
This is the energy transferred from the electrons to the ions is called the Joule effect. This is what happens in a wire of copper with strong current and then when you burn your hands, copper atoms are fixed, and you have the electrons flowing and bump into its atoms, that is why the energy is transferred to the copper you have this feeling of warmth. What happens in the superconducting coils is precisely that when lowering the temperature to a value close to the absolute zero, and the medium becomes superconducting electrons flow in these windings as if there were no atoms in these windings. And it is a phenomenon we can explain here gradually as the temperature rises, increases the speed of the electrons. And the more it goes, the more they will fast, and the less they interact with ions. They do not have the time to pass on their energy. Do you imagine you are driving on a highway and you have cars next? You press the accelerator and progressively the faster you drive, the car size decreases. If you have too much speed you have cars that are great as toys and then after they are points, and then you're on the highway is empty. This highway plasma is such that the electrons no longer interact with the ions. This allows current to be maintained with a field extremely low. But also for consequence is that the joule becomes practically non-existent with this system. We come to raise the temperature of the plasma up to 20 million degrees. This is what the Russians had done. But beyond 20 million degrees we cannot heat well. We need to find additional means of heating you heard in our heaters by injecting neutral microwaves etc. So you see how the system works. You have a set plan with a magnetic field which is variable. I do not know if many people know, it is true, that one can find it in books, is that this machine heater which is a tokamak, initially, they are not made to run a steady state. You could say, for people who use them, is that it was a problem? This is not a problem, because that system is limited to tens of seconds or hundreds of seconds of my decor, and as initially they hoped to run for milliseconds, they were happy. If they were told the electric field will stop, they did not care, because the plasma lasted so little time, the records were a millisecond, two milliseconds. With jet we got several seconds of containment. But with heater it is thousands of seconds, thousands of a second, there are dozens of minutes. At this time, the question is, are we going to do with this system non-stationary? No, we already started e poor Super to consider a system that takes over this electromotive field which created the movement of electrons. It takes over with waves. It was a beautiful English word is current drive, this means controlling the current. Once the order can be more common but as the electric field is very small, it is a bit like plasma brushing with a brush and it is next to nothing, but that's enough. Whether during the transitional phase, or whatever then the system is extremely unstable. I hope you will understand how to operate Tokamak on startup. But it is not finished. I think we really explain. The second function these machines this is, because their appearance greater we show you every time it will work with mixtures of deuterium and tritium, there are many in seawater, it is no problem, but tritium, when is forced to buy Canadian, it is very expensive and there are only a few pounds in the world. There is no question of operate a machine like heater within poor tritium. This tritium must be manufactured by the machine itself. Here the problems start. We'll have behind the wall of heater. 
place tritiagenous the cells, which are elements containing lithium so that the neutrons produced by fusion, colliding with lithium, give a reaction lithium neutron give tritium helium therefore the time we will continue the recovery of tritium, and as always it takes a neutron, and we have a great chance of losing a large amount then there must be two elements, which are either lead or brilliant who will play the role of multipliers neutrons. When the merger creates a neutron must be an element that doubles the amount of neutrons. You see it is not easy. The lithium and sodium as it is alkaline, it burns in air and it explodes in water. There are videos on the internet that show you that, where you can find lithium. There are lithium batteries, can open the battery and find a lithium foil. <laughs> I do not advise you to do so. We burn it on with a lighter. And if you want to throw in a bowl of water, it is very dangerous. Lithium, it is therefore not easy. Heater staff will tell you, but it is a tritigenic tiny cell. Yes, but in a complete machine there will be 400 cells. There will tritigenous elements with a large amount of lithium. And I can tell you one thing, and I'll show the image on the screen, because it is a proof. CA studied cells tritigenous water cooled. This has the shape of bananas, that you can see in figure a mixture of lithium and lead water cooled. If ever lithium and water are mixed, and then it's the full fire, the burning of the plant. So this is the only question that may arise. When people ask, is it dangerous heater? We must quickly address this issue. Environmentalists are immediately focused on the dangers with heater. For example, heater is built in a seismic area. It is true that the region near Kedarch is an area that has a great reputation of seismicity. I live 20 kilometers, and in Lambeth, there was an earthquake which destroyed the whole village in 1909. It will be objected that we have taken precautions and the experimental reactor is built entirely on blocks against earthquake. You can see in the photo, they are being made. Seismicity it is not a good argument to attack heater. Second argument, there is tritium, radioactive. This is an element that has a half-life of 12 years, and if you breathe it, if ingested, it can mix our body and cause damage. The objection is to say that in these machines, the pressure is very low. In this machine of 840 cubic meters, there will be one gram of tritium. It is not much. Around the plasma chamber, there are three walls, the first wall containing the plasma, and then the cryostat, that is the enclosure, that keeps the cold, and then a concrete wall. So heater organization says, that tritium could leak, is very unlikely. The danger this is not in this point. There will be with demo, reactor after heater, with tritium breeding blankets, and the fact that a fire could be a disaster as said so. It is the fire of the breeding blanket. Engineers say they have a different solution to the lithium this is to mix in a ceramic etc. This is not simple. But danger is not the most important argument against the project. The most important risk for heater it is failure. The danger is that it serves nothing. It does not work. This will be seen in another part that will be devoted just to plasma instabilities.
But for the moment, I tried to make you understand this is where it came from and how does it work. I hope I have succeeded.